This is an update on the uh, big headache van leak. I had done a lot of tests on it, and uh, when we get a rain, we get the same damn problem. And although it's cut down quite a bit, it's impossible to stop the leak completely. I don't know what's going on. It's one of these things that's impossible to find. So this is my solution. You know, I've siliconed the window windshield again. I even put uh, silicone in the uh, little rain gutters. I uh, ran a bead of white silicone down the little rain gutters and everything. I checked the roof. I checked everything. And then the cowling. Redone all that again. And just no, no way to stop it. So what I'm going to do, and if any of you out there have a similar problem with a vehicle with a leak like this, this is the way you may have to do it. I've done a lot of thinking on it, and I've come up with a system that I think should work quite well. And here is what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to get this out of cardboard. And what this is going to be, I'll take it over here and I'll show you on the side of the shed here. Okay, pretend this is the firewall on the inside. I made this on an angle so that this will sit like this and any water that drips down from un underneath the dashboard will be caught on this thing and then there'll be a drain hole made in the bottom of this and a little rubber hose and it'll go outside the firewall looking under the dashboard here pull this carpet back okay this is going to sit I have to remove the uh, dimmer button here it's got two, two uh, uh, bolts here and just comes right off. I don't know about this wire. This wire might not be long enough to go around the top of this. Now because of the emergency brake, if you see on the template here, I have to cut out that part of it. This side of the post. This is fastened. This is screwed into the um, this support is screwed into the firewall. I'm going to just notch that out because uh, I won't be able to get my wrench in there. And what this is going to do is sit up in there. It's very hard to show you now because I got to remove us. Remove this button first so I can get it in there. And it's going to sit up because it, here's where it is. It's dripping on this wiring here. And I had a, a container here and caught some of the water. But some of it's been dripping here and then dripping down onto the rug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this in. And I'm going to mount that on an angle. A slight angle, not much. And then I'm going to make a hole here and have a rubber hose coming out into the firewall and dripping onto the ground on the outside. Instead of doing it through the floor, I'm going to do it through the firewall here. And it's going to have a rubber hose going outside. Probably 3 8 inch in diameter, maybe a half inch in diameter, a uh, little rubber hose. Gas line or something like that, probably. Uh, it'll drip on, it drips on this wiring here. So this thing, this lip here, will go up underneath here. And this whole thing... This whole thing will get siliconed on these two sides here. So there'll be, if any water comes down here, I don't have any water coming down here, but this thing is going to be 11 inches up to here, so it'll end up about here. That'll cover any future leaks that might develop up in here. Because there's no way, there's no way I can, uh, I'm taking the camera and I'm pointing up in there, there's no way I'm going to be able to um, stop it any other way. So what I got what I got to do now is I cut this I got to make this thing up exactly the way it's going to be made in the galvanized sheet metal this is going to be the template after I get this all formed I'll take off the tape open it all out flat and use this as a template and do my cutting on the sheet metal and then I'm going to put it all together with pop rivets and then I'm going to silicone the seams this little notch here where I X'd out here on the on the thing here that you can see that's to clear this and originally I was going to take this bolt out here and slip my thing up underneath but that's all well and good but when this thing is up like this how the hell am I going to get my wrench in there 
So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rely on the silicone to hold this in. And on the edge, on the very end over here, I'm going to have a little tab coming out so I can put a screw in so it'll hold up tight there. And uh, that will have a slight, it'll have a slight tilt to this. Which means that I'm going to make this end on a slight angle. I have to bring this corner out. Well, this is just stuck in there now. This gives you an idea of the back side. You see where I... I don't know if you can see where I notched out. But... I, I got a problem here. This wire here is not going to allow me. I am forced to cut a hole in the uh, galvanized and put the wire down too, which is another source of a leak. Or I can try to run it across the firewall and have a notch in the back and have it coming down there. Either way, just in an, another place where it could leak. Uh, I'm going to have to do some modification here in this corner because it's not up there. I had measured it, it was up there, but this is how it's going to be. Now the way this is sitting, it's going to be on an angle. I'm going to be dropping this end down here. This end will be down a little lower than this end so that the drain will be here with a hose coming out and the drain will be at this end. Uh, these sides are a little over one inch high and that's plenty. And any water drips from here it will catch in here and go down in and keep this area all here clean and dry. Well I got a lot of measurement to do so rather than waste it on video We'll come back on this video when I get the piece all made up out of galvanized metal. I'm ready to bend this sheet metal here in my homemade bending jig. And I got to do several bends on it. I got to make the lip, which is going to be here. And then I got to make a, a three quarter inch bend in the in the bottom, so I'll move this back and use this as the three-quarter inch bend uh, form and then make this part. So once I get this bend, bend bended the way I wanted it, then uh, I will continue. I'm going to make this a little longer because what I want to do is I want to fold over the edges with my metal bending uh, pliers here uh, about a quarter inch so there's no sharp edges so this dimension is going to be like about a quarter inch more you know bigger than what the, this cardboard shows and again this cardboard is uh, a, a rough estimate there's going to be some tweaking involved before I get this sudden done slowly. <clears throat> this is heavier than the metal I wanted to use. I think it's 20 gauge. It sure would be nice if I had what we call a, a break. I used to have it in junior high shop class years ago. Uh, makes it a lot easier, but of course this is the poor man's way of doing things. Alright. Not perfect, but it should do. Now I gotta form this part. See this part where the, where the crosses are here, the uh, the lines. Well, that's uh, three quarters inch, so that's gonna be like that's the bottom of the tray. So I gotta form that. And I've already got that in there, so I just gotta bend this over to form that, because this piece of wood is three quarter inch thick. So we're gonna do that right now.
we got a kind of like a v-shape um, that we have to keep so there'll be final tweaking on this we'll pull it out of here and see what we got all right we're gonna have to adjust this of course but uh, you can see that well, I think I got it about right here Here's the angle, there's the part that goes on the firewall right here. So it's gonna sit like like so. Once again using the fire uh, the shed is the example of the firewall, it's gonna be that angle right there. So the next thing I have to do is make a quarter inch. I gotta bend this at a 45 a quarter inch over and the reason for that is I have to get this away from the firewall a quarter of an inch to allow for that wire that I showed you for the headlight dimmer switch that's the only possible way I can do it is to have the wire come against the firewall and let it come down behind this and then what I'm going to do is to take the putty and put putty in here and then fasten it to the firewall that way. So I'll use the putty as a sealer and a spacer. Well, this is what I have to do. This goes against the firewall here, this part here, and my fingers tapping on. This is the cutout for that little uh, brace that I told you I wouldn't be able to remove because I wouldn't be able to get the bolt back in again. This has to be folded up. This has to be folded to it. This has to be folded up this has to be folded to it and um, then there'll be a, um, a little fold up here and a little fold up here so I'm going to do all those folds right now first of all I gotta cut a little notch in here Then I'm going to try to fold this up. Now, this is going to be in the way here, so I'm going to have to bend this out just a little bit. Let's see. This is my metal bending plier. Right. So this is the side that's going to go against the firewall in the corner. And this will go against the firewall itself. This will actually be the passenger fender side right here. So now what I gotta do is to bend over this. Before I even do that, I gotta make the little bend here. Now unfortunately this is too wide to make this bend here. So I'll have to use regular pliers for that. Now well, not very professional, but we're gonna use a pair of lineman's pliers because the nose is wider than an ordinary pair of pliers. That's nothing new. I, I've used uh, whatever tools I got on hand. I'm only bending lightweight sheet metal anyhow. I think this is 20 gauge. So, what we're going to do here, we're just going to bend this up and this will be like, you know, keep the water from running over the edge although there's a there's a slope on it anyways but this would be a little better now the only problem I'm going to have with this is to seal the corners when I was taking sheet metal shop years ago and you're talking 50 years ago now I used to be able to solder these things but I don't have soldering equipment heavy enough like that we used to use the uh, the 50-50 solder, the no corrode soldering paste, and we used to throw the iron in the uh, gas uh, flame and heat it up. 
I don't have any of that stuff and I got a small lightweight soldering iron and that would not heat this up enough. So if I could solder all these seams here that I'm going to be bending over, I uh, would be better off. But we're going to have to pop her again and use silicone rubber. Now here we can use the metal we can use the metal bending to get this one bent up. I'm going to knock out this corner a little bit here. And bend that up. Okay. And now we're going to have to rely on silicone to do this, I'm afraid. A lot of it, but this is tilted, so we're not going to really have any leak in here. Uh, my problem is down in these corners here, when I get these bent over, and in the back, because water's going to be in here, and then I got to make a hole somewhere along the line to put the uh, rubber hose in, and then silicone that tight to the sheet metal. Well, I've been busy as a one-arm paper hanger with the crab, so I haven't been able to. Um, videotape very much but let me just show you what I've made already it's kind of a Rube Goldberg I had to butcher up this corner here and had to bring it over on an angle because that corner uh, has a, a you know it's not perfectly square and this thing wouldn't sit up into the firewall properly now as you're looking at this thing of course it's this way up into the firewall the emergency brake is here the bracket for the fuse boxes here and this is notched out for that wire for the dimmer button so this has got to be about a quarter inch away from the firewall because of this wire so I notched that out as you can see there so what I have to do now is to build all this up with insulation probably either putty or silicone in here, here, and here, and then of course on this side. I may have to pack that with silicone, but before I can do anything, there's several things I have to do. First of all, this is a piece of eighth inch aluminum that I had left over from another project, and I'm going to screw that on the back of this. I'm going to show you how it's going to go. Uh, screwing this right to the back of this. This has got to be filled in with insulation anyways so it's not going to affect it going against the firewall. This will support this end. On this end here, we're going to make a some kind of a clip or something to hook into the corner and hold it tight into the corner. Not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet. So I got to put this on first and then after that, as you can see there are holes in here. I wouldn't expect it to be watertight. So after I get that bracket made, or mounted on here I should say, then I'm going to do is I'm going to silicone all these areas up into here, in these corners here, and I'm going to put a little silicone in this corner here, so no water will come out and put silicone in here. Normally uh, I would solder all these joints, but I don't have heavy enough soldering equipment that I used to have years ago. I have my American Beauty soldering iron, but that's all in storage, so we're going to do, do it with the silicone route. So we'll get these corners all nice. This one here, like I say, I had to butcher up. I had to take it apart. It was nice like this, because I needed to... See that angle there? See how that is? I had to do that, because it wouldn't fit into the corner properly. And uh, when it was in there, this was about a half inch away from the side, the, the uh, wheel side of the uh, the van. So now it should fit in there tightly. And this area here will have to be silicone too because that's the bracket that comes down in there from the support for the fuse box. Yeah, I got my bodywork tools out. You recognize this. I ain't using Bondo today, but I just needed to get out my pop rivet guns and my bodywork tools and so forth to get this thing made. 
So we'll silicone it today. Can't do any more with it until the silicone sets up. And then I'll uh, mount it. Okay, you can see that they've got the little bracket on there with the hole drilled in it for the screw. Pop riveted in with a 5 16 pop rivet. And we're going to seal it with silicone all the way around, including that rivet, and all the way around on the inside. And we'll let it dry, and we'll continue on it tomorrow. Well, this is what I did. You see that little plastic thing with the burrs on it? That's a little thing I bought at the hardware store, and I siliconed it in so that it got a drain here, and you can actually see the you can actually see the hole there. It takes a quarter inch piece of tubing and it'll go like this on here that sits up under the under the dash and this hose will come straight down along the firewall and down through the floor but because I had to add this today and put silicone in there we have to wait another 24 hours before the silicone sets. So this is what's holding us up on the whole overall project is the fact that we have to let, allow the silicone to set up. The rest of the silicone is all set up from yesterday. So that should not leak. And what I'm going to do here, this goes up against the firewall as I showed you. I'm going to put some uh, of that duct seal in here and all around here. I'm going to put about a quarter inch thick layer on there and I'm going to push it up against the firewall. And when I screw this down to this, this tab will, that you see hanging off of there will be screwed against the firewall like that. And uh, therefore It'll be puttied right in against there, so if any water runs down behind the, you know, along on the firewall itself and down into the tray, it shouldn't get behind it. But I actually, I don't think it's actually running down the firewall. It's dripping off of that wiring harness that I pointed out to you earlier in the video. All right, I've got it screwed here to the uh, firewall. I've got the hose connected, and I didn't have to drill a hole in the floor. I just went down where this cable is here, into this grommet here in the floor. Now it's a little bit of an angle, but it's not kinked. But what I got to do here is I made up, I made up a little bracket, and what that's going to do is I want this to be able to be removed. So there's no silicone in here. There's all that putty, that duct seal. But I need to hold this tight against the corner. So what I did is I made this up. And this is going to sit like that. And I'm going to put two screws in here. But what I got to do is to push this as hard as I can in the corner, mark these two places, and then I'm going to use these screws over here. These are self-tapping screws that I have used on the bottom of the van when I did bodywork last year. Same as this one right here. Now these are self-tapping sheet metal screws that take a nut driver. Now there's a hole here already, but that's for the plastic thing that sits here. So I'm, not, I'm just gonna put silicone over that because water does drain down in this thing in the back here. And I'm gonna have to drill two other holes because I can't get that centered and lined up with this. So I'm not even gonna try to. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll be off video with that. But this enables me, as you can see, as close as I can get, I go right to the firewall. And when it's time to remove this, all i got to do is take this bolt out here and pull it this way, away from that corner. Because all this is is going to be a holder to jam in there to hold it in there and hold it tight come back on this video when I get that screwed into place. Well, as you can see, I've got the uh, 
the bracket, if you can call it that, holds it up in, into the corner. And it's screwed in with two sheet metal screws here. I had a hell of a time lining it up because I had to push this in, you know, against the uh, putty as tight as I could and then hold this up and in and drill these holes in the back here so that I can get this in there. And I put some silicone behind here so there'll be no leaks. Uh, as I said, this can be removed. All I got to do is take this out and it's just stuck to the putty and I can pull it out. Should I have to add any more putty, I can still pull this out. Uh, this hose here, of course, is very, very stiff when it's real cold out. But right now it's warm in here. Now, you're probably wondering why I cut this out. That's because the emergency brake has to have room. To, the back part that comes down in here. Now, the leak was dripping on this. See that multicolored wire right there, that harness right in there? Well, it's dripping on that from up above somewhere. Also, it was leaking. I don't know if you can see it because I'm trying to hold the light. My finger is there's a black wire, a uh, uh, bunch of wires in a one of those wire wrap things. Well, it was dripping off of that, but it was dripping off towards the back. It wasn't dripping right here where my finger is, so I figured I could leave this open because it's not dripping there, whereas this one is dripping right about in this area here. Should this start dripping up in here, I'll put a flexible piece of plastic, something that would flex, rubber or something, that'll flex when I push the emergency brake down and close this area off, if necessary. And the, the dimmer button is still accessible from the driver. That is why I wanted to tilt this up enough and get this up. And you notice that it's on that angle that I told you I wanted to make so that all the drain water would come down at this end here. Well, folks, that's it. This is what you have to do when it's impossible to stop a leak or find out where it's coming from. Again, this is one of the poor man's way of doing things. And probably... There aren't too many people that do stupid things like this, but you know what? It's better than having a carpet all soaked with water. I'm not going to run no water tests on this. Because if it leaks now, I give up totally. So we'll just wait till the next rain or snow or whatever comes. I still got to work on this part here. But this is going to be in the springtime. By that time, you know, this will really tell whether this is leaking or not. Meanwhile, I'll just close all this up. And uh, that's the story. Well, folks, that's the end of the story. If you have a leak like I had here, and you can't find out where it's coming from, no matter what you do, don't scratch your head. Make a water catching tray, just like I did. Thank you for watching. You have a good day now.